Mindy. 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 All right. I'm just Mindy. 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 Back to form 125. Dihydroxy. It's a mouthful. Choli. Calciferol. <laughs> okay. So, it starts in the skin if you were getting it activated from sunlight. 17 steps, whew, plus or minus, because it goes to the lungs, and then finally the final stages are in your kidneys. Chinese medicine had this right way long ago, right? Because wow. they go through all the different, yeah. So here, um, on our little planet, right, we're on our axis, and the sun is over here, and so sunlight that comes, because we're above the 47th latitude, okay, up here, so that means the sunlight's coming in at quite an angle. So even if you laid out naked all day long, you would not make enough vitamin D. Actually, you wouldn't make much at all. And you'd be cold. So <laughs> they've done a lot of really great studies, um, some of them coming out of the Netherlands, because they're kind of our equivalent over there and so forth, of why do we care about vitamin in D? So why? Why do we care? Well, it helps decrease cancer and Tons of studies about this. So here are some of my favorite statistics. Okay, so in postmenopausal women, as we have an aging cohort population, 77% decrease in all cancers. All of them. Okay, 77. Related, Why isn't related that? to and like related to what taking it versus not taking it. So in, in so women who had uh, calcium and vitamin D supplements. Is this study? So this is calcium and vitamin D together. Okay. okay. Adequate levels. Sometimes they would they'll give us exact cutoffs of levels of uh, yeah. nanograms per milliliter and so forth. So that's my that's one of my favorite ones because this is just astounding. Okay. Colorectal cancer. So uh, colorectal cancer, which is our number one, one. All right. That's our number one in the U.S. Uh, so but blood levels of D greater than thirty four, even just like. And the range goes from 30 to 100, so this is just like trying, you know, it's like trying, like a little bit of supplement. So greater than 34 nanograms per deciliter in the realm of colorectal, 50% decrease in cancer rates. Come on, 50% of people, if they just took, just tried. And that's, any, is that still in the postmenopausal limit? Or this is, that, is a different category altogether, yep. So um, these are independent researches. A category of everyone. Of everyone. The okay. rates of colorectal cancer decreased by 50%, 50 in, in adequate vitamin, everyone, in adequate vitamin D. Vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Yep, inadequate. So the reference range, remember, these goes from 30 to 100. Yep. <laughs> so adequate was in this. greater than 34. Just, just something like, just try, just try. <laughs> that's, and that's for our number one killer. Um, other statistics. So another one of my uh, favorites, because for women in breast cancer, so breast cancer. And this was done uh, for women who were taking vitamin D and it was levels maintained greater than 52. So even a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And it just, this decreased rates of breast cancer. This was uh, in women, not in both men and women, because of course men get breast cancer too. Same thing, again, 50%. Wow. I mean, like, so if there's 10 million people here who pick it, colorectal, all right. I wish cut that in half just by taking, just by trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfathomable. Um, and then ovarian cancer is the last one. We have some straightforward research on. So ovarian cancer for women. So vitamin D level greater than 40 nanograms per deciliter. These uh, women had decreased risk of 20% getting ovarian cancer. Right. So how we coach people on the naturopathic uh, side of medicine is I say I want greater than 50. That's my goal. Greater than 50. And when we look at research that does even higher, they like to say that more than 100 is toxic. So we try and stay in the 90, 90's great. Great. Give me greater than 50 though. Try. Because wow, look at all that benefit aside from hypertension and everything else. So vitamin D modulates your immune system, basically. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Tons of research. We love D. You can take it orally. So, we give so shots. What does it? Uh, yeah. What, what does it take? What form do you have to take it in? Mm -hmm. How often do you have to take it to hit that fifty? To hit that fifty. Yeah. So that's a really great question because so doses can range a lot. Oh my gosh! Right. So in your here you are. Hey, in your gut. 
burp down the trap goes. Okay, now that it's your mouth. <laughs> it's supposed to be a mouth. I know there's a chance. Oh, chair. I was like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> <sitting down? laughs> what are you showing right now? There's right, got throat. it. So when <laughs> you put it. vitamin D down the trap, there's different vitamin D receptors in your gut. So we, we say VDR, vitamin D receptors. And you got one for mom and one for dad. And some people, these are, are mutated and they do not absorb D orally very well. Mm. So in patients, when we have them on drop therapy by mouth, we then check a blood level to see. Because some people will take, so what we recommend is about 10,000 IU daily for people that are chronically ill, fighting cancer is one of those, of course. 10,000 IU daily, and then we check their blood. And sometimes those people, yeah, sometimes they'll be taking that and they'll come in and they'll be like 34. I'm like, oh, not a good absorber. Just, you know, you could take 20,000. What are the options for someone like that? So the options, if by mouth is not absorbed, then we do. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. We do a shot in the bum. <laughs> <laughs> because in the injection form, it is a concentrated as 100,000 IU in one ml. <laughs> Easy peasy. So, and awesome. there's also 200,000 and 600,000. That was one of the things we did for me after yes. my diagnosis when yes, I came in. Yes, we sure did. So, so fun. I know that normally <laughs> it's, well, yes, no, but it's a teeny little needle. Yeah. Um, but it, you don't feel a lot in your bone. But if it's going to take a while to get oral absorption up there. We can do shots. And some patients, they do their oral and they, they just can't budge from 30. So we might do, you know, a shot every two, three weeks, four weeks for them just to keep them there while they're, while they're really inflamed and fighting or yeah, in therapy. Yeah, there's so much benefit. I mean, and this is just the stuff we've studied. Can you imagine yeah. everything else? If it decreases hypertension, that's going to decrease heart disease. Hi, what's the number one, you know, killer in America? Number one is heart disease. Number two is cancer. What's number three? Oh, you're gonna love this. Diabetes? No. no, no. Oh my gosh. So, killer it's in America. Car accidents. <laughs> I, I that's a great guess. How does vitamin D help car accidents? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it lets you, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have to think about it. still try to answer it. I know, right. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so heart disease is the number one killer. Yeah. Okay, two is, is all cancers. Cancer. Number three, here we go, big word, iatrogenic. Iatrogenic is properly prescribed Properly taken medications, drugs. I don't know, so like medical error? No, not medical error. Not error. Side effects. Interesting. Interesting. Number three, oh. killer. Properly prescribed, properly taken okay. medications. All right. I did not uh, come up with that list. That is the list. Huh. You didn't look it up anywhere. Might even be a Merck. That'd be good. Uh, <laughs> probably not. But yeah. Iatrogenic. That's why they use a big word like iatrogenic. And people are just like, oh, it's sure, something bad. Thing that kills you. We just forgot about that, but yeah. So what does vitamin C do related to iatrogenic? Ooh, well, so properly prescribed, well, properly taken medications could be anything. Yeah. You could be taking a statin drug to try and control cholesterol while you're getting your diet and exercise regimen under control, but that statin drug is going to deplete your CoQ10, mm. which is going to give you increased chance of AFib, Arrhythmias, heart attack. Anyway, I could go on. <laughs> um, so yeah, iatrogenic could be it's any drug. Interesting. Properly prescribed. Properly. So we think of it as side effects. Oh my goodness. Right? Isn't that crazy? That's so why do they uh, often combine vitamin K with vitamin D? So K two and D we use together um, because basically we think of it like this in common terms. So you can think of right. Part of the storage depot is, is we want D to be stored in the bone. So K2 tells D where to go. Uh, oh, okay. okay. So, so yeah, they, they work well together. They work synergistically together. Um, D eventually, so during periods of sunlight, we would have the better capacity to make D and then we have to store it 
for all the winter when we don't have access to the sun. Or maybe the sun's out that we don't want to go out there and freeze or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, we store D in bone. It's not the only place, but the majority of it is stored there. So K2 is imperative for help us not just to get the D on board, but to store, to store. what we yeah. need extra. Because there's probably a million other things that it does that we just don't even know. We like, cool. you know. That's why we're doing K2 and D yeah. in the cancer boxes. Yeah. Right, it's exactly. Nice. Yeah, you want to be putting it in and storing what you're going to need for later so yep. that while you're sleeping or between therapies or you, you skip Friday because you had a birthday or whatever. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Perfect. yeah, so that's in a nutshell. That's okay.